Oh, hi! Today, we're updating our motherfucking Hogwarts robes because it's been so long. I'd say at least five years since my last tutorial, and that video was garbage, to be honest. The only saving grace was that I had little tiny Frank at the time, and he always insisted on traipsing across every bit of fabric I ever laid out on the floor, so he made a little appearance. Although, hey hi, if you're new here, I am Joe. I make weird shit on the internet. Welcome. But also, you may not know that I've recently adopted this little tiny bean here. This is Bert, as in Bertie Bot, as in Bertie Bot's Every Flavor Beans, which is why his bed looks like that. There's a whole slew of videos on how that all came together if you have any interest in checking other shit out while you're here. But yes, I've been very stressed out lately because times are tough, but also I saw my first leaf that was turning because of the weather, which means spook season is upon us. Even though it's mid to late August, we're gonna run with that and let the Halloween creep start two months early this year. I am ready for it. But also, when I'm very stressed out, I use the Harry Potter series as comfort food almost, and I've been very into the audiobooks again lately, and it just feels like home. And few things make me feel more part of that world than making Hogwarts robes. I want to make myself a nicer set that showcases my better sewing skills now. And this is probably the design I'll be using for the Hogwarts robes I'll be posting in my Etsy shop as the fall season approaches. I really need to get my patterns and everything down so that if it comes to it where I'm making a bunch of them, fingers crossed, that'd be the dream. I can make it as easy to put together as possible. But also, hopefully I'll explain it better to you all. I am specific going a route that will hopefully make this as user-friendly as possible to make because I know my last tutorial there's a lot of measurements involved it's a little daunting I don't explain it well I don't even show half the shit because a bunch of the files got corrupted and I wasn't able to edit them together I have a lot of comments on that video where people are saying I've never sewn anything before but I really want to make my own Hogwarts robes and it kind of kickstarts their sewing career maybe career is a strong word but they at least give it a try <laughs> without further ado Let's fucking get into it. I am going to base my robes off of this button-up shirt. If it fits a little oversized, I think that's fine because I think the robes are supposed to be a little bigger. Not supposed to be super fitted, where with the exception of the sleeves being too short because I have forever long praying mantis arms, this shirt fits pretty well. And yes, I'm going to be cutting this up into the separate pieces, but if you have a shirt that you want to base this off of that you don't want to hack apart because you don't hoard clothes that you don't wear like I do, you can just lay your garment out that you want to trace and fold over the bits that you're trying to keep out of the way and work around them. I've been meaning to make pattern pieces off of this shirt for ages because it fits so well, but I don't like to wear it, so that is why it is getting hacked up. Plus, I just really need to destroy something, even if it's for future repurposing. I just... I've been having a week. P.S. If you're unfamiliar with my Patreon, I do have one of those if you have any interest in supporting me. Going over to hang out, even just a dollar helps and you get all the access to everything I post on there. Every tier is covered because the higher up people unlock the lower levels for you. So thank them while you're at it. Also, hey, if you can't and you're just here for a couple minutes and you're just dipping your toes in my channel and aren't sure if you like what you're seeing, thank you for even spending this amount of time with me. I appreciate it. As you can tell, I tried to seam rip all this apart, but Mm, it was taking too long because this is a well-made garment and I'm gonna make everything a little bigger anyway So saving the seam allowance is nonsense. Okie doke. Here are the pieces I retrieved from the shirt is the back panel I cut the collar off. This is future me jumping back I did cut the neckline bit off of the shirt as well as the collar So both this piece and the chunk that attached it if that makes sense You don't need either of them because we're gonna be attaching the hood. Okay back to whatever I was saying And I cut off one of the front bits the left or right side They should be mirrors of each other So it shouldn't matter which one you take and we're just gonna double it up and cut out two when we cut the fabric And then I have the sleeve I cut the cuff off because we're gonna widen that and make it a little bit of a bell sleeve Almost none of the shaping of that matter judging by how scrunchy and horrible and misshapen all of this is I should probably iron it. My body's already rejecting the idea of taking the iron out. Oh, and we're also going to need a hood piece. I have a hood pattern piece that I traced off of an old hoodie. If you just want to wing it, it's not a very complicated shape to do. This is probably kind of oversized. You just need to follow along the collar section. Probably don't even need this severe of a curve to it. It's flat in the front. It's just a curve or it's shorter on the top and longer in the back. Nothing scary, I super promise. The only thing you have to be wary of is that it's big enough to fit around your head. And if you're worried, about things not fitting together because this is all a lot of pieces to be messing with. My rule of thumb is 
cut everything a little bit bigger and then if you need to take things in in certain areas you have the extra wiggle room to do that okay let me iron all this and then we'll get to tracing the actual pattern out on the paper it's gonna be great i promise it's not scary i know this probably sounds like a lot if you're new to sewing but it's all gonna be good you got this so i have this most of the way ironed but i realized this has darts because most women's shirts have boob darts so depending on what your shirt looks like when you do it you might want to take the darts out this one is so small i'm not gonna worry about it. I already know I'm going to widen out here to make it more straight because it does have this curve to it, which I don't need. Just going to give that a little heat. Basically, I just need this to lay flat and I wasn't able to do that with the dart here because it's meant to give you shape. Now we have all our pieces. So like I said, I'm making myself a proper set of patterns so that I can easily duplicate these going forward. But if you're just making this one set, you don't need to do the paper pattern part of this. You can chalk or draw all of these lines onto your actual fabric and cut from there if you want to cut up this step. You'll just want to do the length extensions the same way I'm doing it on the paper on your fabric. So how do we go from these pieces to pieces that actually look like they'll make up some robes? Well, wait one second, I need more coffee. I did try filming this the other day, but it was really late. And by really late, I mean like 7.30 and I go to bed about 8.30 and I had two beers and I got as far as seam ripping that one side of the shirt. So I figured if I'm going to make this at all sensible to anybody else, I should probably just do it in the morning when I'm full of coffee. And actually, if you wanna see any of that, I will post an edit of it over on my Patreon because I think that would be a funny thing to share. You useless information for my YouTube channel, but hopefully everyone will get a kick out of it over there. Okay, hey, remember that part where I was like, let's get to the patterning part, and then immediately derailed the entire train of thought I had. Let's actually get to the patterning bit. You can use whatever scrap paper you want. If your paper is not wide enough and all of your pieces are symmetrical, like this sleeve should be. Yeah, awesome. So if I fold this in half, everything's even. This is perfect. I'm gonna line up this top straight edge with the edge of the paper. So this is where the fold is. And then I'm gonna shimmy it away from the corner a little bit so I can add a half inch to an inch of seam allowance. So the sleeve ends here, but I need to make it longer. All I'm gonna do is lay my arm across it and mark where my wrist is. So just make a little line somewhere here. Bigger is better. We can take it in after if need be. Okay, so as I mentioned, I want this to flare out a little bit, like a bell shape to it. Gonna curve this out just a bit. I don't want it huge, but I do want it to be a little, a little drapey. And then I'll take a ruler, any kind of straight edge and draw up here. Yeah, nothing too scary. You can obviously make it a lot more dramatic and have a huge opening if you want. And if you would like something a little more precise than whatever the hell I just did, you can lay your sleeve on your arm where it would normally sit. The edge of this should be right where the top of your shoulder is. And then actually measure this distance. You know, you need a ruler, you can mark on a piece of string or something. We're adding about five inches. And yeah, I have it marked at about seven inches at the end, but also keep in mind we're going to be hemming the sleeves at the edge. Going to flare the sleeve out a little bit more than I have it here. Okay, now I'm going to cut out the pattern piece. And just so I don't forget, I'm going to write a note up here that says on fold so that I won't accidentally cut out just half a sleeve because that'll look bonkers. Okay, next pattern piece. This one I guess I would recommend holding it onto you and measuring how far down. Again, you don't necessarily need a measuring tape. You just take a piece of string, use your fabric, and just hold the starting point and the ending point. Anything just to give you a gist as to how much more you need to add to this. So I'm going to stand up. This ends right at my waist. I'm going to take a measuring tape. I very much do not recommend standing on a rolling chair. This is a bad idea, but I'm too tall to fit in frame. And then I'm just going to measure down how far I want my robes to go. I think maybe a couple inches above my ankles. I'm adding 30 inches. Holy shit, I'm tall. Didn't fall off the chair and eat shit. Calling that a win. I'm definitely going to need to tape some paper together because I'm a big lady. All right, since this pattern piece doesn't need to get folded, we are gonna add seam allowance to all of the edges. I'm gonna trace with the extra half inch to an inch around here. Like I mentioned when I was ironing this, this has a curve to it because it's a women's fit and everything. So you can make it a little straighter. And rather than drawing and cutting the seam allowance on here, I just have this straight edge of the center of the shirt, a half inch to an inch in from the edge of the paper. So that saves us one step. And okay, we got the bottom of the shirt here. So I'm gonna measure down that extra 30 inches, which I'm just barely gonna get with this extra sheaf of paper. So that's our length. And then as far as the width of the bottom of this, I'm gonna let it flare out a little. It's gonna wanna flare out at the bottom anyway, so you don't need to make it crazy wide. Plus, this is gonna be doubled because we're cutting out two, and then we have to account for the back piece, which will also get a little bit of flare to it. So that all adds up once you have all the seams together. I'm just gonna follow that line for the most part and bring it out just a wee bit. You can't see what I'm doing. Very 
professional filmmaker here. Let's bring it out a little bit. Draw a line. There we go. Now to cut this out also. Oh my gosh, okay, here's the front piece. It's fucking huge guy. By the way, hi, I'm from New England. Now for the biggest piece of them all. So just for the sake of saving paper, and because I'm almost definitely gonna have to cut this on the fold on the fabric, I am gonna fold this in half. Again, just lining up everything so it's nice and even and check all the seams and just make sure it's all laying flat. Gonna tuck this up here. By the way, when you have things on the fold, you don't need to add seam allowance for the fold part. So that's why it's up against the edge here where the front piece I had, because that's a separate individual piece, not not getting cut on the fold. That's why I had the extra seam allowance, if I didn't explain that. Just if you were confused why some pieces were against the edge and some were a little away from the edge. All right, and same deal. Add seam allowance, straighten out that curvy bit. Now the lowest point in the back of a shirt is generally lower than the front if it's a fitted situation like this. So I probably don't have to add the full 30 inches. Hey, this is me from the future. When you are measuring the length of the back piece, just line up the side seams with the front piece so that you know the measurement from the armhole to the bottom is going to be the same. Back to the pattern making. By the way, when you're adding pieces together like this, please double check that your edges are following the same line so you don't have it accidentally cockeyed and have a way wonkier cut than you are actually anticipating. I say this from someone who is definitely fucked up piecing extra pattern bits together and been completely fucked over. <laughs> and much like we did with the front, I'm gonna continue that line, let it taper out a little bit. That is not at all straight. There we go and cut the rest out. And this is what that piece looks like. This is what we have so far, plus the hood, which is half of the hood. So keep that in mind. You're gonna have to cut out two and make sure you keep some seam allowance. Time for fabric. Ugh, okay, I am going to cut out the front pieces first. So I have my fabric folded in half. So here's the fold, here are the raw edges. The front piece doesn't need to be on the fold. So we're just going on the raw edge this is where the straight side is. I'd recommend cutting the selvage off first because I have such a wide seam allowance that's going to get lost in it, so I'm not worried about it. P.S. I made these pattern weights in a video probably sometime last year with some paint sample cards, so if you're interested in checking that out, it's one of the cheapest projects I've ever done. I was actually just watching an Annika Victoria video where she was talking about how, considering how long she's been sewing, she has never bought or made herself her own pattern weights, and that's how I was feeling because I had been doing it for so long. as like, I fucking need to make them now. And I don't regret it at all. Ta-da! We have two pieces. This probably just looks like a lot of black fabric. Now let's be as smart as possible about using the rest of this fabric. Oh, just barely! Hell yes! So since the sleeve needs to be on the fold, and there's just enough space up here, oh, I'm so excited. I'm gonna cut this one out and then see if I can fit a second one further down here. But yeah, just make super sure your on fold is lining up evenly with the folded edge of the fabric, and you're not accidentally lining up this straight edge on the raw edge side. Ta-da! So there's one sleeve. That's the really bonker shape. It looks like a Pokemon. Now I'm gonna try to fit the other one. Yeah, not quite. But I can probably get one, if not two, hood pieces out of here. I think I need to get my scissors sharpened. Okay, here are my two hood pieces. Ugh. I took a little lunch break because I realized I hadn't eaten anything and it's almost one o'clock. Cool, cool. Working from home. A plus. So I'm about to cut the back piece out and I have it on the fold. This will total give us one big piece. Okay, here's the back piece. And actually, rather than cutting the sleeve on this fold and having an even longer strip of just a single edge, I'm gonna open this up, take my first sleeve, open it up, and I will cut the other one out this way. Ta -da! Now we have two sleeves. And that is all the black fabric we need. Okay, we had to take another break because a certain someone was getting a real feisty because I wasn't letting him lay on my fabric. So we just went for a little walk and now he's licking his butthole because that's what ducks do. And yeah, time to start cutting into the yellow fabric. I'm gonna cut out the hood pieces. Oh man, I almost just fucked up real bad. Not real bad, but I was gonna make things way more complicated than it needed to be. So you do need to cut out two of the hood pattern pieces out of the yellow fabric. And then you need two pieces of the front pattern piece cut out. I'm so thankful I have just enough fabric to fix this. <laughs> so I have the bottom lined up, but obviously cut along here if you need to. I'm gonna cut all along here and all along here here. You're also going to follow the armhole and the neckline. These two lines right here, exactly where the pattern is. But then when you get to the neckline, that's this bit here, 
you want to add half an inch to an inch on top of it. I don't have a cohesive way to explain it to you right now, so we'll we'll tackle that when we get to it, but I promise add a little extra to the neckline and you will thank me when we get to the part where that all gets attached. So two front pieces out of yellow, a little extra added to the neckline, and two pieces of the hood out of the yellow. And let's pretend this has been a seamless, non-fucked up, everything's been going perfectly from the jump type project. Now, these are all the fabric pieces you need to make the actual robes. There is an optional extra step you can take if you want a phone or key pocket or a wand pocket. Doing that is as simple as laying whatever you need to measure around on the fabric and then cutting, you know, two or so inches around. And then I will likely have a wand for this, which I haven't made my own new one yet. I am gonna do another video explaining how I make them soon because the last one I did, the last two I've done, haven't been very good. And I need the really cool hot glue technique that I've been using to be shown to more people because it's so fucking useful. But anyway, as far as cutting the pocket, I'm gonna go a little bit wider because I'll probably have accents on this that are gonna chunk it out a little bit. And I also don't want it sitting all the way in, so I have it sticking out of the top a bit here. And then yeah, just whatever other thing you might need pockets for, this is the time to cut those out. So I've just finished ironing all of the pieces, and one thing I wanted to show you that I'm tweaking, this is why people use fucking tripods. Here are the sleeves. I have both layers right here, and I have this tapering out at the end. One thing I forgot to do when I was altering the pattern, because yes, I want this curve to be here, but the way I want to hem it is by surging it and then folding the edge in at least twice. So I'm gonna need about half an inch of this being squared off. So I'm just gonna cut off the very points. And actually, let me fold these in half, like the way we cut them out so that I'm making sure this is actually even. Now there's enough room, so when I sew this edge together, it'll come about here, and then I still have this to serge, and then when I fold that in once and then twice, I'll still have a nice flat edge. Okay, now before I put the iron away, I'm gonna take my pocket pieces, which I did not cut very evenly, but these are gonna be hidden away from prying eyes, so I'm not super worried. I'm gonna fold in all of the edges, quarter inch to a half inch. That's why I gave myself so much room. Younger me probably wouldn't have done the ironing part, but I've learned my lesson with this kind of shit and it's gonna make it so much easier going forward. And then pick one of the short ends to do an extra big overlap for, or if you're not doing pockets at all, don't worry about any of this shit. I think that's everything I need the ironing board for, for now. <sighs> okay, all my pieces have been ironed. Now we start the assembly process. If you're looking at your pile of fabric like, this is so many pieces, what do we do? Don't back out on me now, we've come this far. I feel like the hardest parts are over. I'm going to attach one of the black front pieces to one of the yellow front pieces. And I realize I've been saying yellow for this entire thing. Obviously, whatever your house colors are for this, I just happen to be a Hufflepuff. I'm gonna line these up right sides together. The only parts you're gonna stitch for this first step is the very long side. Go in quarter inch to a half inch and do that for both sets of front pieces. Obviously, pin stuff if you need to. I tend to not pin that many things, but this is a very long piece of fabric. And don't forget, we intentionally left a little extra of the yellow for the neck side, so don't do anything with that yet. You're just gonna stop stitching where the black fabric ends. Beautiful, beautiful, nicely done. Now, we're gonna flip those right sides out. And just do that for both of your fronts now that they're all together. I'm actually gonna iron this so it looks as nice as possible. It's gonna make a huge difference. I know it's a pain in the ass and it adds so much more time and it's hot as shit in here and I'm gonna do it anyway because I want these to look beautiful. Before I do anything else with the front pieces, I'm going to attach the hood pieces together. All you need to do for this is sew along the curved edge of each set of pieces. I'm gonna use black thread for this. I will switch to white for this really quickly, but then we'll go back to black for the bit after that. I am gonna need to iron soon, so I have that heating up. Just trying to think ahead and be a smarty pants about it for once. And I have my two sets of hood pieces together. So I'm gonna take one as is and line up those center seams and then tuck this one inside of here and make sure the back seams are lining up. Should look like this. I'm gonna pin to make sure the center seams are lining up perfectly, and then we're just stitching the front pieces. So the straighter line, I'm gonna sew from this corner up to the center seam, back down the other side. We're not touching any of the bottom neck bit. Okay, so now we're gonna flip this so it's right sides out. And you basically have a balloon shape. We're gonna press this seam so it's nice and flat. Again, I know a younger me wouldn't have done it. Ball's in your court as far as the ironing for this project. If you're gonna skip the ironing, just tuck 
the lining color right in there. As for how to iron this, let's go over to the board. I'm gonna lay the seams like this, right sides up. Because the yellow is the lining and that's gonna be inside, I'm gonna push all the seams under the yellow side. So they're all gonna be pushed this way. So I'm gonna take my iron and tug a little bit so that it's really getting right against the stitches. And just work your way down the whole thing. You can also press the other hood seams flat if you want where you attach the back seams together. I actually will do that while I have this here. And I'm gonna do this for pretty much every seam on the project. And I would like to do a nice job so that if I'm wearing this out, someone notices and thinks that they look nice, they can ask, hey, where'd you get those? And I can be all, yo, I made them. You want some? Money, please. <laughs> I would never say that to someone. It's gonna look a lot crisper and you won't have the edges trying to roll in on themselves, which happens sometimes if you don't do that initial pressing. I also like to fold the outer color in a little bit, just like an eighth of an inch so that there's no risk of the lining fabric sticking out. And like I said, I'm gonna do it for the hood back seams. Probably would have been smart to do this before I attached the lining to the outer fabric. See how much nicer that looks there? Okay, so you can stop there. I am gonna top stitch a little bit of edging. I think I can get away with keeping all the stitching on the black here. It's gonna be just right at the very edge of everything. Now I'm gonna grab the fronts that we already stitched together and turned out and I am going to do the same thing. I'm gonna knock out ironing and then do that top stitching I was telling you about. I need to charge my camera because I've been filming for so long. So I will see you once that part is done and then everything else is gonna go together so fast. The pattern stuff and cutting everything out is the hardest part. This is the most tedious part, but then the best part is for last and it's gonna come together so fast and it's gonna be great. Okay, I had a snack so I'm sure all my lipstick is gone to shit. Everything is pressed out how I wanted it to. Look at how much crisper the edges look. And this is the stitching I did. It's right on the edge. I think this is called under stitching. I don't know, don't quote me on that. But I did it for the hood piece and for these. Now, if you got into this part of the video, you're like, we haven't even assembled anything then fuck the lining, man. Just skip that part and just do the black fabric. That's all gonna cut out everything we've been doing this past chunk with the ironing and shit. You, you just do the black bits. You're still making something. I'm not gonna judge you. I think it's rad that you're even interested in making a thing for yourself. Okay, I did just realize there's one more thing we have to add to this before we construct the whole thing together and that is adding the pockets. Again, that's an optional thing. You can say fuck the pockets and skip this part. I'm just gonna put one of the front pieces lining side out, I guess, and decide where I want the pockets to go. Maybe do the phone a little higher, the wand pocket a little lower. I feel like I would go for the hip with this. I'm just gonna do a straight stitch along this, leaving the top open. Nothing doing. I'm sewing the pocket only to the lining. I have this whole thing opened up and I'm about to stitch everything on, but I didn't clarify that before. So just don't stitch it through both layers. That's why we're doing it now before all of this gets closed up. Okay, okay. Pockets are attached. Look at them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Assembly time, for real. We are going to start shoulder seams first. Keep this in mind, you need this little flap. If you're worried about any of your pieces that have a lining flopping around everywhere, you can definitely base stitch it. Just set your machine to the longest stitch you have. I'm not super worried about it moving, so I'm not gonna do that. Okay, so I do have my two layers pinned for the front bits. And here's my back piece laid out. You haven't seen that guy in a while, huh? I'm gonna lay these right sides together. So just make sure armholes are facing the same direction. Cool, cool. Just gonna pin through that additional layer now. And hey, use as many fucking pins as you want if you're nervous. Ow! Oh God! I don't know if you saw that, but I definitely just stabbed the fuck out of myself. <gasps> oh no, you guys, I can't, I cannot believe I did this. I didn't mirror these. No, I have two left sides. I can't believe I fucked that up. <gasps> okay, no time to lose momentum. Keep an eye on what side of the fabric you're working on, guys. Hey, fuck, I did so much work on this. Okay, it's fine, it's fine. We're not gonna even hesitate. We're just gonna take all the stitches out and redo it and repress it. There's no time to stop now. Be back in a little bit. Oh boy, I done fucked up, but it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. At least now you know what not to do. That's something, right? Okay, I fixed it, everything's cool. I treated myself to a beer while I was fixing everything. So let's just keep that train rolling, shall we? We've come this far. And also, yes, pumpkin beer, cause 
This bitch wants to get spooky. This is what all of that should look like. I did all the ironing, top stitching, everything. So I have these two layers pinned together. Gonna attach that to this shoulder seam. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna do one row of pretty small straight stitches across this line here and this line here. Just the shoulder seams. Look at what happened with the pin. It hurts. I cleaned it because I immediately went and sat on some grass. Probably isn't the cleanest surface. Okay, this is a weird angle. Your stitches don't look like this with all the extra threads and stuff. Don't freak out. It's just because I have a serger. For attaching the hood, going to find the midpoint. It's like the center of the back bit. I make a little notch so I know that's where it is. I'm going to line up the center, which I already have marked of the bottom of the hood. So right where that seam is. And that's gonna go where that notch is. So it's gonna line up like this. Here's where I'm gonna tweak a little something. And this is likely going to happen if you're making your own hood. It's gonna be fine, don't freak out. So if I line up the edge of the hood with the edge of the collar, there's way more of the hood fabric than there is of this fabric up here. All I'm gonna do is pull the hood taut and let it meet up wherever it's gonna end on the front piece. Is this making sense? The neckline edge of the front piece is this little triangle right here. I'm gonna pin where the hood is meeting right here. And all I'm gonna do is unpick this amount of stitching on the front, just this little section here. It's like three inches and we're gonna smooth all of this out. This will also let the hood sit more open. The one downfall of using a colored shirt is it it's meant to be buttoned up and be pretty closed off. Okay, so I've picked apart the top three inches of the front collar chunk because we still need the extra yellow, but not the black. So that's why I didn't just nip the whole thing. So I'm gonna put a pin where that shoulder seam is and where that's meeting the hood because we don't want to compromise that shape at all, but we can definitely alter the collar bit. So if you want to avoid all of this, just wait to make the hood until you have this whole thing together and you can shape it yourself that way. That's probably the easiest way to do it. I kind of anticipated something like this happening, so I'm not phased by it. It was going to be an easy fix. And now I can go back and tweak the pattern. So for next time, it'll be a breeze. Anyway, to make the adjustment, it's nothing overwhelming or daunting. We're just gonna nip this excess bit of black off. So that lines up now. We're gonna trim the yellow, but a little ways up to keep that excess. So yeah, I'm gonna repeat the same trimming on the other side, the other front collar bit. So hear me out. You know how we've been taking so much care to leave this extra bit on the yellow part of the front section. We're gonna keep that out of the way. So I'm only catching the black layer of the front piece, the black layer of the hood, and the yellow layer of the hood. I'm gonna sew right across here, go right across the back section. We already pinned everything in the center together and then continue onto that other side of the front. Keep that yellow section out of the way too. Let's get that done and then regroup and then I'll show you what the weird extra flappy bit is for. Okay, so. We're finally here at the weird part. You see how there's a lot of stitching along the yellow? It's very visible, especially on this edge over here where the hood and everything is attached. So the extra flap is specifically for covering that up. So I'm gonna fold it over like this and just make sure it's covering all of that stitching. It's just gonna give a much nicer edge because this particular fold is probably gonna be exposed more than other chunks where I'm not worried about this on any of the other seams. It's just right here. Ow, that was right into my thumb. Please don't bleed on the yellow fabric. Three pins ought to do it. And then just do the same thing on the other side. Also just make sure you have a yellow top thread and a black bottom thread or whatever your color scheme is. So yeah, that's what that looks like here. I'm sure there's a multitude of ways to handle that. I probably picked an overly complicated way. It's what my brain wanted to go with. So here we are. So now we put the sleeves in. So before I attach the sleeves, I'm gonna flatten out and smooth out these layers. This is the black and yellow layer of the front piece. Again, you can baste this all together so you don't have to worry about things flopping around. I'm cool with just pinning it. Nothing's sliding around and there's not giant folds because I did get a little bit of a fold on the hood and had I done this type of smoothing and pinning ahead of time, I probably could have avoided that. A little something to keep in mind. Yeah, see, there's a little, a little fold right here. Not the end of the world. I'm not super mad about it, but ideally it wouldn't be there. Much like I made that little notch in the back of the neck to find the center, you can make a notch like that on the center top of the sleeve. And then just make sure the shoulder seam is the center 
of your armhole. This big curve right here, you're gonna line this up right sides together, take the center of the notch, and put it over the shoulder seam, thusly pin. And this is something I especially like to do with sleeves. If it doesn't look like it's gonna line up evenly, is adding some puffiness to the top of the sleeve. I think that would be kind of neat. Much like with the hood, I'm not surprised this didn't happen because we made so many alterations to things and this is another thing I can take into account for when I make my next set. But here's all you do to add a little tuck, almost like a pleat. And you can do as many as you want. Kind of accordion the fabric like this on both sides and just try to keep them even. So it looks like this should be pretty much lined up now. Oh, perfect, yes, okay. I like how that looks. And same thing, pin your way to the edge over here. They're kind of opposing curves, so more pins the better, in my opinion. So there we go, we have our sleeve pinned in. I'm gonna stitch this and then do the other one, just because, especially when I'm doing sleeves, when I have both done, I stab myself with pins a lot. The sleeves are in, I'm so excited. All right, this is obviously inside out, but just so you can see how close we are to finishing this. So the only actual thing left is right sides together. We're gonna sew from this Flat end we cut earlier, all the way up, make sure the armpit seams are lining up, and then you continue all the way down the side. All the way down, all the way down, all the way down, until you line up the bottoms. Okay, so I pinned down the arm and all the way down the side and realized this is something I should have taken care of sooner, which is why I mentioned it earlier in the video. This is just after that little clip. This is the difference in length. Here's the back piece. And here's the front piece. I'm just gonna cut across. Nothing to panic about. Everything is great. So I'm gonna finish what I started and sew the underarm down the side, and then we will hem the bottom and the sleeves, and then we will be done. God damn it. Did you ever think we were gonna get to this point in the project that we're doing the final seam? I was also doubtful for a second, but thanks for sticking with me. Last seam done. Last seam done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All I have to do is hem. E. What I do is I do a row of serging along the very edge and then I fold it over twice and top stitch that. You can still just fold it over twice with the raw edge and do a normal thing of stitching. I'd recommend ironing if you're doing that just to make sure everything's even. It'll save a lot of frustration under the machine, but however you want to handle it, you go ahead. Well, hey y'all, we're here. <laughs> And Bert is upset about it. Where the neck ends and the hood starts is at the, it's perfect. Where before I felt like it was always drooping and too gapey, where I think copying the collared shirt was the move to make here. I did have the weird widening up here, which I'm gonna fix on the pattern as soon as I'm done filming, but I'm, I'm so beyond pumped. The sleeves are perfect length. I'm so glad these are not lined because it'd be way too heavy and not having the back lined is also keeping it pretty light. This is the thing. If I wear this to an event or something, it's usually hot as shit inside. So I don't want to have an entire huge extra layer, but it still has the fun color bit in the front. All right, we're gonna go sideways for a second. I just need to get fully in frame. No, even with this, not quite there. Okay, this is probably intolerable to watch. I told you at the beginning, I'm tall. I can't wait to wear these to Granite Con. Ooh, speaking of, if you're seeing this before September 14th and 15th, 2019, and you're anywhere near Southern New Hampshire, please come out to the Granite State Comic Con because I'm gonna have a booth there. I'm gonna be selling stuff like this and I have some onesies and stuff that look like Pikachu and Totoro and I'm gonna make kid versions of those. And I have a bunch of artwork that I'm selling and jewelry and paintings and hats and scarves. It's all the things. I'm very pumped about it. I even have a bunch of mystery bags of older inventory that I'm never gonna make again. So now's the time. So how do we feel about this? Oh God, I don't know if you heard that. So nice of you to fart the second I pick you up. Good God, okay, hold on one second. Bert is just such a gentleman. So yeah, anyways, Granite Con is happening. If you aren't able to make it or you're seeing it at a different time in, in the world, I do have an Etsy shop where I can make custom stuff like this for you if you want. It'll be a slightly better version of this, but I'm, I'm pretty fucking pleased with how this turned out. Also, just so we get a full view of what the bell shape turned into. I'll probably have to get full body shots for the thumbnail outside, I guess. <laughs> Maybe standing across a baseball field will finally get me to fit in frame. But yeah, if you're here because you like Potter stuff, I am also 
very big Harry Potter nerd. So I'll throw a playlist up here of a bunch of Harry Potter videos I've done in the past. Some of those are collabs with other friends because Harry Potter nerds are very good at finding other Harry Potter nerds. One of my favorite things about this fandom. Also, if you are new here or if you're someone that does the thing that I do where you will look up the same YouTube account every week or so to watch the newest videos, but you feel like subscribing is a big commitment. Hey, I'd really appreciate it if you finally did hit the subscribe button. It'd really mean a lot. I also mentioned earlier in the video that I'll be throwing an exclusive video up on my Patreon with the other night's debacle with me trying to start this project <laughs> and immediately failing. That'll be up by the time this is live. So if you have any interest in checking out my Patreon, every tier will have access to that stuff from a dollar up, even if you just hang out for one month and then cancel your subscription. And also, hey, huge thank you for watching, especially those of you that comment regularly. You really make me feel like I have a home here and it's very, very special to me. So thank you. If you decide to make your own Hogwarts robes and want to tag me elsewhere, since you can't share pictures in YouTube comments, which is super unfortunate, probably for the best big scale, but I have such an awesome tiny channel that people don't troll very often. Absolutely feel free to tag me on Twitter and Instagram. My handle is holy crap it's Joe. I also have a Sewing Nerd Studios one. I'm gonna go and hang out with this tiny dude because he is falling asleep in my arms and very badly wants to go to bed. So yeah, other videos to watch, Patreon shit, subscribe button, Etsy shop if I can get it up here. If not, all the links will be in the description if you want to hang out other places. And I will see you all back here with another video on Wednesday. Thank you so much for hanging out. This was such a blast. I finally fit in frame. Let me do a twirl.